One thing is a given, no matter which level of sport you play at, you, there's going to be a fallout between the coach and the players. Whether you're playing at the junior levels or all the way up to professional sport, there's always going to be a fallout between coach and player. Alex Ferguson famously did it with David Beckham and Roy Keane. So there's no manager that's immune. In fact, Jaap Stam also was part of that fallout where he saw Stam at the peak of his careers. And it was one of the things that Alex Ferguson always said that he regretted doing when he saw Jaap Stam play again. He said he was too quick to pull the trigger on getting rid of Jaap Stam. I think he got rid of Jaap Stam because of Jaap's uh, publication of his book and what he said in his book including the fact that Alex Ferguson had tapped him up to come and join Manchester United but this is not about Alex Ferguson this is about Jose Mourinho and after this video I'm going to do one around Pep Guardiola as well but here are the players that Jose Mourinho fell out with so the first player that Jose Mourinho fell out with was Juan Mata so Mata the previous year before he was sold was Chelsea's player of the year but Jose felt that Oscar was a much better player in the position that one was playing and didn't rate one in fact he didn't rate one or his work rate and the thing is Juan Mata was also not exactly the quickest player around the pitch even though intelligently he knew where to position himself and he was there to basically make decent passes and push players through Juan Mata was sold to Manchester United for an enormous amount of money and at that time uh, David Moyes had totally stuffed up the transfer market so the fact that, could, that they could bring in a player of Juan Mata's talent uh, fell to them like a win the fact that Chelsea wanted to get rid of Juan Mata was a major win for Jose Mourinho so it was one of the first players well, one of the players that we know of that Jose fell out with Another high-profile player was Kevin De Bruyne. And the funny thing is that De Bruyne said that in his entire time at Chelsea, he only spoke to Jose twice, uh, which is surprising. I mean, if you, if you have a player that, well, at that particular stage, De Bruyne wasn't the player, the accomplished player that he is today. And De Bruyne retells a tale of where Jose called him into an office, into his office. And started reading out stats about passes, goals scored, assists, etc. And Kevin said he stood there trying to figure out what the hell Jose was on about. And then he realized he was actually comparing him to the other strikers in the team or the other players in the team. And Kevin pointed out to him at that time that he said, look, the other players have played 20 games. I've played three. Obviously, the statistics are going to be in their favor. But Kevin said he felt that Jose and the club didn't want him there. And he, in fact, said, look, if you guys don't want me, sell me. And I think a month later, yes, the following month, he was sold for £18 million to Wolfsburg. And we all know what happened to De Bruyne. He basically shined. I mean, he really outdid himself at Wolfsburg. He was brought back into Manchester City, into the English Premier League, where he went from strength to strength and... Uh, Today is one of the top players within the Premier League. Mohamed Salah, yes. Mohamed Salah played for Jose at Chelsea as well. Uh, but not long after joining, uh, Jose told Mohamed that, listen, he sees his future not at Chelsea, but at another club. Um, and the comment was that we would either let you go on a loan or we can sell you outright. And what he said when Salah left on loan, he said, no, we need to sell him outright because it's better that we do not have Salah back at the club. Little did he know what a great player Salah would turn out to be and what a stalwart he would be for Liverpool. Speaking of which, there seems to be discord between Jurgen Klopp and some of his Liverpool players, including Salah. But that is nothing new. I think... Uh, I want to do a reaction video to the spat over the weekend against West Ham. Uh, and it's not surprising. Jürgen is leaving at the end of the year. Salah's got one year on his contract. There is no fear of Jürgen anymore because he's not going to be there next year. 
So now the toys are beginning to get thrown out of the cart, which I think is a, I think is a, is a huge disappointment because they both have done exceptionally well for Liverpool and they should not end this relationship based on that. Samuel Eto'o. Now, Jose, funny enough, Samuel Eto'o fell out with Pep Guardiola and he's probably going to be one of the key players that I mentioned in the, in the Pep Guardiola video after this. But Jose accused Samuel Eto'o of being too slow, too old and too fat. And what Samuel did when he scored a goal not long after that, he brought a walking stick with him and walked around with a walking stick as, a, as, as if to mock Jose to say, even a old man like me, see how well I can do. But funny enough, their relationship didn't end on a bad note. In fact, he's turned around and he said, Mourinho is one of the best people who exists in the world of football. I don't know if that's a dig to Pep because of the relationship there. That, that's not quite cool. Uh, but yeah, that's what Eto said about, about Jose. David Luiz, the defender left Chelsea for PSG in 50 million. Uh, and he said when he left that if Jose turned around and said that he actually missed him, that Jose was lying and he was contradicting himself. So the relationship there was very, very frosty. Eden Hazard. There was a lot of friction in Jose's final season with Chelsea. And funny enough, Eden Hazard was the star player for Chelsea the year they won the title. But it got to a point where Jose started to blame everybody in sight, including Eden. And what he did say in one game was when he picked the team and he put the team out on the field, he said, we're only playing with 10 men which was a dig at Eden for not tracking back and not tackling and not doing his fair share of defending. Uh, so he basically nailed Eden for his defensive work, which is surprising because Eden wasn't a defender and more forward line player, but it was what it is. And what he said, and I'll actually quote this, Eden is the kind of player who is not mentally ready to look back at his left back and live his life for him. Make of that what you will, I can't figure out what the hell he's talking about. Hendrik Mkhitaryan, Hendrik said that when Jose brought him to the club, that the relationship between the two became very, very frosty based on performance, to the point that when they met it, when they ran into one another at breakfast at the club, Jose turned to, to, to Mkhitaryan and said, because of you, the press criticizes me. Not long after that, Eden left the club and yeah, the relationship never recovered after that. And am I not mistaken in saying that when Jose left to join Roma, wasn't wasn't Mkhitaryan playing at Roma? Well, he didn't play very long after after he left the club or after Jose joined Roma. So if he was at Roma. That relationship didn't last very, very long. Anthony Martial. So Anthony was the most expensive teenager at that time. Purchase price, not quality. Uh, when they brought him to Manchester United, he started off quite well. But not long after that, the relationship started to go south. In fact, Jose tried to sell him on a number of occasions. That didn't quite work out because uh, Anthony Martial was one of the Glazers' favorite players. And they stopped. Jose from trying to sell him, which infuriated Jose, and Jose then just would refuse to play him, which didn't help either one of the two because the relationship just went from bad to worse. In hindsight, Jose was absolutely right. They should have gotten rid of Martial when they had the chance. He spent most of his, his, his latter years at Manchester United injured, and when he, when he was not injured and he did come back to play, he plays with a style that shows that he really, really doesn't seem to be interested in what's happening on the pitch, which infuriates everybody, including Jose. Uh, <clears throat> funny enough, Chris Smalling. So again, when Jose went to Roma, Chris Smalling was there, I think initially on loan, and then they sold him permanently to Roma. Um, Jose accused Chris of not being brave. Uh, Chris had, had, I think after 10 minutes, came off the field, complaining that he had hurt his toe and Jose said that basically Chris is not brave enough uh, because he, he being Jose, had never seen a player that comes off that quickly after having hurt his toe. The weird thing about that was that Chris Smalling had actually broken his toe and 
I don't know of many players that can go onto the field and run around and kick a ball with a broken toe. Phil Jones. So Phil Jones missed the shoot a penalty shootout against Derby County in the Carabao Cup. And the weird thing is when Jose said, when I saw Jones going up as the sixth ten penalty taker with uh, Bailly as the seventh penalty taker, I knew we were not going to do well in the game. Which is surprising because, and, and he said, I knew we were not going to score. Which is surprising because the funny thing is, he had to choose the players to go up and take penalties. So publicly criticizing the player for missing a penalty when he chose the player to take the penalty is a little bit mind-boggling. Yes, I do know that some players would put up their hands and say, yes, sir, I'm quite happy to take a penalty. But if you know your players, you know who can and who cannot take a penalty and you try and push them much further down the line. Uh, if your first five penalty takers and the scores even, and you need to go into the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. I remember there was a situation uh, with the Europa Cup, if I'm not mistaken, where David De Gea, everybody had scored, and David De Gea had to take the final penalty and he missed his penalty. These things happen. This one really makes me laugh. It's a Luke Shaw, Jose Mourinho love hate relationship, more hate. Um, for some reason or other, Jose never, ever rated Luke Shaw. In fact, at one stage, he wanted to exchange Luke Shaw for Danny Rose from uh, Spurs. Spurs were extremely ecstatic at the, at the prospect of getting Luke Shaw, and they were quite comfortable and happy to do that exchange. Luckily for Manchester United and Luke Shaw, that exchange was blocked at the higher levels, and it never, ever happened. But the relationship between the two never recovered. And when Luke did start playing well, Jose would take credit for Luke playing well. I'll never forget the comment where he said, when he was asked about Luke Shaw's game, and he turned around and he said, yeah, but he played with my brain. Now, I know for a fact Jose was never a great player. So having somebody like Luke Shaw play with Jose Mourinho's brain doesn't make sense. You cannot coach a player to play the way you think. Uh, at least I don't think so because you are your own person. But anyway, that's, that's what happened. And in fact, it got a little worse at when, I think it was in the European Championship or the World Cup when Luke was doing exceptionally well, Jose still went in and criticized Luke Shaw to the point that Luke actually turned around and said, well, Jose may, should maybe concentrate on himself because obviously he's got an issue with Luke in that he can't seem to forget about Luke Shaw himself. But those things happen. Uh, Bastian Schweinsteiger. So Mar Mourinho publicly admitted his regret over the treatment of the German. What had happened was that uh, they showed up for training at Carrington and after training as Bastian was going in with the rest of the players towards the dressing room, he was actually stopped outside the dressing room by the CEO or one of the CEO's underlings and told that Jose doesn't want him in the dressing room, that he must go and train with the under 16s. And change with the under 16s in fact not train so bastian being a professional asked well what's the problem and there was no answer and said look can i speak to jose later and they said yeah but in the meantime you know go and train uh, go and change in the under 16s dressing room which he did and he never got to speak to to jose uh, for a long time after that in fact he was left to train on his own or with the under 16s um, and he was given no explanation and it was only much later on in, in the season that Jose actually apologized to Bastian for the way he treated him. And I think Bastian played a couple of games, but by then the relationship had gone south and um, there was not much more to say. And I think it's just, again, egos. Or, and this is a surprising but Jose doesn't seem to be the type of person that would take the input from somebody else without going to find out himself. He's too arrogant for that. So the fact that he allowed himself to be swayed about the issues around whatever was plaguing Bastian Schwein Schweinsteiger at the time is really surprising. But he banned Schweinsteiger from, from the dressing room, which is so weird. Eric Bay. Look, Eric Bay, the relationship between Jose Marino and Eric Bay was really, really not good. Um, at the start of the 2018 2019 season, Eric had played a few games. And had not really done very, very well. And then in one of the games, after 19 minutes, 
he got subbed off. And the relationship never ever recovered from that. I think he, he had two more appearances for Jose uh, before his exit in, in December of that year. Another high prof profile player is Paul Popper. Remember Jose brought him back from Juventus at a huge amount of money. He was the most expensive player that Manchester United had ever purchased from Juventus. And just remember, he was at Manchester United and they allowed him to go to Juve on a free um, when he was playing under Sir Alex Ferguson. So the fact that they brought him in at such a high price said a lot for the, the quality that they thought they'd get him. But it quickly soured where Pogba was basically uh, given a dressing down in the dressing room uh, after one game where he was said he's got no respect for other players, he's got no respect for himself, he's got no respect for his manager, he's got no respect for the fans. And it, went, it got even worse where Jose accused Pogba of being a virus in the dressing room. Uh, needless to say, that relationship went south very, very quickly. Uh, and Pogba, to a certain extent, got the last laugh because Jose was fired not long after that and Oli came in. Uh, but then again, Pogba did what Pogba normally does. He's got a very mercenary attitude. He made certain that his contract ran down and he then left on a free again. Back to Juventus. Got a huge signing on bonus. But what goes around comes around because basically what happened is that after he rejoined Juventus, his career went downhill from there very, very quickly. Prone to injuries. Uh, he was banned for a substance, uh, illegal substance that he had taken. And uh, I don't think his career has ever recovered from that. In fact, I think he is still banned from football. Um, so what a waste of, of, of a talent. Marcus Rashford, I can remember the, the press and the fans calling out Jose as to why Marcus Rashford wasn't playing more often. Why, why Jose preferred... Uh, Lukaku to Rashford and when Jose played Rashford in the one game and Rashford missed a chance against young boys in the Champions League Jose turned to the crowd followed his arms as if to say see that's the reason why I don't play him he's not good enough now you guys can see why I don't play him at all so that relationship went south and, and Rashford spent a lot of time on the bench under Jose Mourinho Lukaku, they bumped heads a lot. Uh, Lukaku mentions that himself and Jose would fight regularly, uh, would argue regularly. Lukaku did very, very well for Jose in getting a lot of goals for him against the weaker teams, well, against the lower tier teams, but he struggled against the high tier, high -tier teams, um, which didn't quite go on very, very well. But the thing is, Lukaku still rates Jose very, very highly, and when they parted term, when they parted company, they parted company on the best of terms. And what Lukaku has actually said, but he's my guy for sure. He's my guy. Fred, oh, this, was, this was a total disaster. In fact, to the point where Jose told Fred one day at training that your time at this club is not going to be very long. You're not going to last very, very long at this club. Obviously, three months later, Jose was fired. So Fred had a chance under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And depending on which side of the fence you sit in, either he did okay or he did pretty, pretty bad. And there was no tears when Fred was eventually sold uh, much, much later in his career. There's a big one, Ika Casillas. So Ika was the Mr. Real Madrid, goalkeeper for Real Madrid, captain for Real Madrid, started at a very, very young age, very popular in, in, at Real Madrid amongst the fans and the players alike. Uh, in fact, was one of the personalities and the senior players at, at Real Madrid, which obviously would have threatened Jose Mourinho's position from authority perspective, authoritative perspective. And the relationship went south when he benched Ica for a game. Uh, it got even worse when he accused Ica of being too friendly with the press. Um, and I can remember that, if I'm not mistaken, Ica's girlfriend uh, worked for the press. So, uh, I think that was part of the argument. But anyway, that, that, that falling out with Ica didn't go very well. It didn't go down very, very well in the dressing room. 
Uh, in fact, it created a huge divide in the dressing room where a lot of the players were against Jose Mourinho and it actually led to Jose Mourinho getting fired um, towards the end of that season. Unfortunately, Ica had left the club as well, so both of them kind of lost out in, 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 in that particular situation. And then finally, Jose's final season at Spurs. If anybody can remember Indombele. Tungai Indombele. Now, when I saw Indombele for the first time at Spurs, I thought, wow, what a player. I mean, this guy was big, he was strong, he was fast, he was, he was really well balanced on the ball. But unfortunately, that relationship with Jose didn't, that didn't go down well. And when Indombele's performance started to come down, him and Jose clashed on a regular basis. But again, that's nothing new. As soon as Jose went to Spurs, uh, the first question that everybody was asking is which player is he going to choose, is he going to pick on? At Chelsea, it was high-profile player, it was Eden Hazard. At Manchester United, it was Pogba and Luke Shaw. So when he went to Spurs, it was no surprise that there was one player that um, did not uh, see eye to eye with Jose and it was somebody that Jose could pick on. So there you have it. These are some of the players that Jose had fallings out with. There's probably a lot more players and there's probably going to be a lot more players because he's, he's, his coaching career is not done. I'm going to be doing a video around Pep Guardiola and the players that he's had a falling out with as well. So stick around for that. This is Insight with Zaid. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Cheers.